Thanks so much for coming together as a community this afternoon. Well, not even this afternoon, this high noon. Uh, to remember, you know, the 10th anniversary of the September 11 attacks. This has been as a really a community event, very short, very sweet, hopefully, and just uh, a way of us coming together to, to acknowledge what happened. Um, yesterday, when I was watching the memorial event at Ground Zero, I was, I was really caught up again in the emotion of that terrible day. <clears throat> and like, like only few other events in our lives, you know, the death of a parent, the birth of a child, the assassination of President Kennedy, I'm sure every one of us remembers um, what we were doing and where we were when those planes flew into the Twin Towers. The shock, the horror, disbelief remain with us. We grieve for our loved ones who lost their lives on that horrific morning, and we celebrate the heroes who challenged the attackers and who rushed to assist those in need. And here I just want to tell our own little embassy story, <clears throat> because um, uh, I think Captain Eric Olson, firefighter in, uh, in New York at the Seaport Station, was just getting off duty that morning. His brother, as we all know, is Captain Olson, Cliff Olson here, He's getting off duty that morning. and. Um, and he went to, uh, well, he was going home to repair something, I think his motorbike or something, when the call came in. He couldn't even get a ride across town. He put on his hat with a couple of other guys that had just gotten off duty and, and walked over to the Twin Towers and went into the North Tower and, uh, and was never heard from again. And so, you know, the Olsons gave something very important to us that day. And, um, but the beautiful part of the story is that uh, I think two years later, um, the Cliff and his wife had twins that were born on September 11th. And uh, they were uh, Eric and Luke Olson. And to me, it's, it's kind of what this event really and that microcosm was about. It was the horrific loss of, of loved ones and then the rebirth of the possibility of new life and something we can look forward to in the future. And as I look back myself over the 10 years since that awful day, <coughs> I, uh, can, they, can you hear me? It keeps going in and out, so I, I don't know. Um, I want to remember, really, not the images of destruction, but of the outpouring of support, of caring for millions of people, uh, uh, lot, from millions of people around the globe. I remember the images of mountains of flowers at the gates of our embassies around the world, including this one, the streams of messages of support, and the waves of friendship coming across from all over Italy and all across the globe, and in. And in fact, just yesterday, we had more flowers placed at our gate right here. A decade later, the world has inevitably changed. But the ideas that inspired those millions of people to identify with the United States have not. Since 9-11, the founding principles of the United States, principles of freedom, fairness, self-determination, and individual achievement have only gotten stronger. Those who seek to restrict those principles have gotten weaker and are doomed to lose. Communities and nations have overcome fear, toppled dictatorships, and worked together constructively. Far from being paralyzed by the violent actions of a few, people around the world are pursuing a better future for themselves and for creating new economic opportunities and improving their communities. We remember the citizens of over 90 countries who perished in those attacks, including the Italian citizens who died that day. The principles of liberty and democracy that we share are stronger today than they were 10 years ago. 
And this, to me, is the real lesson of September 11th. Good afternoon. Yesterday afternoon, I had the opportunity to meet with one of my colleagues, the ambassador from France. And just as David noted, we as Americans know exactly where we were on September 11th. She too remembered exactly where she was on September 11th. We share that this September 11th moment with the world because everyone, no one believed that it could happen in America. Because if it could happen in America, it could happen anywhere. And it brought us more together as a global community. But what it also signified was that Americans reacted to the chaos just as we always do, with the spirit of resiliency. And that resiliency was supported by outpouring of support from our global partners. As the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. organizations, my team and I work with the FAO, WFP, EFAD to ensure that the global community, as a global community, we provide for the hunger relief needs of the world, helping provide the food for children that their parents can't provide for them. Food insecurity is just another one of those issues, challenges, problems that will create the, the impetus for events like 9-11. So we must succeed in feeding the world's hungry if we want to and desire to re su succeed in eliminating the unrest that created events like 9-11. The world will not truly be a safe place, a secure place, unless every child has food to eat. And that is the work that our team performs. And we thank you, the, mission, the embassy here, for the support that you provide to us. But the one thing that we know is that we are a family. We are working together, as David said, to ensure that the fundamental lesson of 9-11, that we, as a global community, share in the resiliency to move forward for freedom, for democracy, for liberty, for peace, continues to go on. Thank you. Now, before, it, before we leave, um, I really would like to observe a moment of silence. Um, that when we think about that day, we think of what, what we lost and what we gained. Thank you. Thanks very much. It's a little hard for a moment of silence in the middle of Rome traffic, but we love Rome, don't we? Thanks very much, guys.